we're going to call our meeting to order. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Born and unborn. All right, we're going to um, the approval of the minutes we're going to put on for the next meeting. Um, so we'll jump first to our consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that any council member would like to remove? Yeah, I'd like to um, pull number three out to, for discussion. All right, number three and number 23 um, I'm going to pull. So um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exceptions of items three and 23? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Item number three is a motion to approve one three year seasonal contract with Gansett Polk to vent. I'm sorry. Number three is a motion to approach approve the purchase of two 32 gallon receptacles with steel flat covers for the seawall from O'Brien and Sons Incorporated in the amount of $2,610. Great. Thank you. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Take it. All right, all in, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, this was a, an item that kind of stood out to me when I was reviewing this. Um, it seemed somewhat expensive uh, to spend $2,600 on two 32 gallon uh, trash cans, basically. Um, I also received a few emails from residents about this item, so I thought it would make sense to um, allow or to uh, request uh, the Parks and Rec Director Steven Wright to come up um, just to explain this. Uh, I did speak with him on Friday to get more detail on you know, why these receptacles are so expensive um, and why it makes sense to get these as opposed to any lower uh, cost uh, alternatives. So thank you. Good evening. So uh, particularly along the seawall, Gazebo Park and Veterans Park, Unlike any other, or like other cities and towns, when you go down a promenade or a center of town, uh, instead of having a 55 gallon trash barrel or, or a, a drum for trash, uh, we, you know, we feel it's, it's better, and we started a number of years ago to have these decorative trash barrels. And yes, they are expensive, but they're, they're built to last, to sustain themselves, other than when people set them on fire. Back on May 24th, 2019, this past spring, Someone put a accelerant in, in, in the trash barrels and they, they, they were burnt, in, burnt to the ground. And so uh, we have to replace them. We have 18 of these decorative trash barrels. We started this program back in 2013. And then um, when you get to the beach and into our parks, we use actually 65 gallon totes, which we put in corrals. So we, we do, we are very conscious about the money that we spend. But when you, when you think about people walking along our seawall and, and into, the, into the Gazebo Park and Veterans Park area, we don't want to be putting 65-gallon tote as we really, at least from, from the Rec Advisory Board and other, and other councils in the past, we've wanted to put decorative, more decorative trash barrels. Uh, that way, our, the trash folks can take the liners out and, and empty them. They're emptied on a daily basis. Um, we spend about $273 per day having the trash removed from um, April 29th through October 6th, and then our parks maintenance crew does it throughout the winter. Um, there is also an ordinance, um, Ordinance 62-3, Narragansett Ordinance, that trash containers provided and service by the town within public rights of way and public lands may be used by the public for incidental disposal of trash or waste generated in the immediate area of the container and not for the disposal of household trash. We find household trash on occasion in these barrels. So I'll be honest with you, our, our parks maintenance folks do uh, go through that household trash and we see names in that trash. We do send warning letters to our folks uh, that are in rental houses or, or in, in, in town and we'll give them a warning and you know, we don't have that happen again. So we're constantly on the trash um, concerns here in town, particularly along the seawall in Veterans Park and in, in Gazebo Park and including the beach. Thank you. Uh, and one of the other things that we had discussed was some alternatives for uh, similar trash receptacles that were like half the price, like 400, 500, and you had told me that the build quality wasn't really there, they weren't quite as rugged, 
um, and long lasting. Well, if you take if you take a look at these 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 barrels that we have on the seawall versus the ones that are at the beach, the, these are, again, unless people set them on fire, these are these are made to last in, in a salt air environment, and they will last for for several several years. So again, you get what you pay for, and versus having having these you know low cost you know barrels out there, um, they they have lasted a number of years. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? And one other one other point, I believe I believe this council approved similar barrels for the Galilee uh, um, area just uh, a few a few weeks ago. I remember. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes. <clears throat> Funny you should bring this up. Because last, we use Narragansett rubbish, and they're wonderful. But we've been having a real problem with animals getting into the trash, no matter what you try to do. And I asked them if there were any other barrels that the households could use, rather than the rubber ones they tip over, whatever. So he said, not really, except what Jerry's Hardware has them, but they're pretty expensive, too expensive for me. You can clamp them on the top. Is there any kind of grant we could get for some of the residents? And guess what I saw this morning sitting out front? A coyote prancing across in front of the broad daylight and going into the neighbor's yard, which is a fenced-in yard. And Karen Flint from the Senior Center reported she saw the same one a few days ago. She thought it was the same one right in front of the Senior Center in daylight. And that's a little concerning because coyotes can be rabid and they shouldn't be out during the day, especially in an area where there's cars coming down the street, broad daylight. So I don't know if you can address that, but it's related to trash removal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Just All in once, one quick ahead. point related to the trash. Uh, another type of uh, receptacle that me and Stephen uh, spoke about were the solar powered um, compacting receptacles. Um, and they are more expensive, but they, the capacity for those are like three times what a normal receptacle would be because it compacts it. So you'd have less, um, less need for pickup. You know, it would be, the pickup would be less often, so you save some costs there. Um, he did explain to me why that doesn't really work for that specific area. But it's something that we might talk more about in the future for other areas in town. So I know people have brought that up um, just as an alternative to the traditional receptacles. So thanks. Right, anyone else? All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved 5 to 0. Item 23 is a motion to approve a Class F1 alcoholic beverage license for the Narragansett Lions Club for the annual Blessing of the Fleet Seafood Festival event to be held on July 25th. 26th and 27th, 2019, at Veterans Memorial Park, subject to state and local regulations. Is there a motion? I'll make it. There's a second. second. All right. Um, I just wanted to bring this up to call attention to the dates. It's an important event for the town. The blessing of the fleet wanted to um, and, and mention the work that our um, Lions Club and Parks and Recreation does on this. And again, the dates are July 25th, 26th, and 27th. And I'll take this opportunity to thank Steve Wright and the Parks and Rec Department for the 4th of July festivities and related festivities since um, in the Philharmonic event as well. So thank you for those. Um, any comments or questions? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion approved 5 to 0. Number 27 is a motion to authorize the town manager to sign an application for a variance for signage at Sunset Farms. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Um, this is. Um, so, Sean, if you could actually walk people through this since it's a town owned property and what the. Um, what the specific procedural piece of this is, and if we need um, Mark to weigh in, we'll, we will as well. Uh, yes. So the, the uh, facts and travel on this particular item was um, last July, the uh, building inspector's office received a complaint uh, regarding signage over at... Yeah, speak up. Last July, 
2018, the building inspector's office received a complaint regarding signage at Sunset Farm. And um, there were several signs there that were above uh, what's required uh, by ordinance. Uh, Mr. Farrell, who leases the property, was cited, and Mr. Farrell then um, appealed to the zoning board. Um, that the matter has been continued a few times, but at the, at the last meeting, the zoning board had uh, recommended that he go for a variance, but because it is town-owned property, they stated that the, uh, it would require the town manager to sign it. So it's here before the council for uh, your permission for me to do so. Thank you. Any questions on that item for the town manager? Not, not really a question, but I wish Tony was here. He's not, so I guess Mark will have to go for you for, for zoning. So we're in R80 zoning, and the current ordinance is signs can be up to three feet. And what the applicant is looking for, the ability to have two, not one, but two 25-foot signs. The concern I have with this goes back to Joe Trillo from just this past election year where he erected a very large sign, and the town had a hard time getting it down. In fact, we didn't get it down. And then when it went before the municipal court judge, he denied what the town solicitor had, had suggested for a fine, which is our finding for, for the signs. I, for one, do not want to see our town be made into a litany of sign after sign after sign, largers going through. I know for sure that anyone who is going to be looking at the 220, 2020 campaign is not going to want to see larger campaign signs. So for this reason, I, I don't think it's a hardship. In the letter, the applicant says he has a hardship. It should be noted that he lives on the town farm, pays no rent or taxes, um, and unlike the properties that we have in Middlebridge where we do receive a portion, the town receives no portion of, of any type of um, sale at that farm. So I can't see how it's a hardship. I believe it would be a hardship for the town to grant an easement that would allow for a larger sign because that has significant impact on what the, what the town will see from all other businesses. We've had new businesses coming up recently. Was to say that they can't use this as a precedent going forward that this, this town farm has a larger sign. So those are my thoughts. All right, thank you. Anyone else? You, you want to speak? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, Chief, I don't know if you know this offhand, but what's the um, ordinance for, I know this is residential, but what is the ordinance for signage at, for a business? It's 20 feet, 20 square feet. I believe, okay. that's, I believe that's correct. I have the ordinance 20. here, but I believe that's correct. 20 square feet. Okay. So this is residential because of the way that the lease is set up. However, it is being run as a business. And, um, and this motion would be just to send it to zoning, correct? Correct. You, At, you're, not, you're not approving the variance tonight. You're just having... After zoning rules on it, does it come back to the council again? Uh, it does not. It does not. It would okay. be done then. Okay. Great. Thank you. Well, the, the other thing, uh, we've been operating, um, you know, Kenny Bungalow out of there. And I don't think that's zoned in the R80 zone. I may be wrong. But, uh, you know, it's non-conforming use, that whole uh, facility, whether it be the farm or uh, Kenny Bungalow. So I have stock in the boys over there, boys and girls over there at planning, and I see no reason to, you know, move this forward. To not move it, what do you mean? But we're voting to move it to planning, right. So I'm, I approve it to move it to planning. So. so if we move it forward, the zoning board can approve it, and then we can expect to have every other business, every other person who may want to run for office to come back and cite this as a reason why they should have a larger sign. You know, we, we've, I know that many people in the, in the town are, are very happy with the farm. It looks great when they walk by, but we've had significant pushback from, from the family that's running it for a while. I know that Tony right now, Santilli, is working on, on cleaning it up, and I, I just think that there are many unresolved issues right now, so to be able to put yet another favor, because it really is a favor, is going to be adding five feet more than anybody else in town can have, I'm going from 20 to 25, that we dial it back a little bit. We have a new town manager hopefully coming in very soon. We have a good amount of history for that town manager to be brought up to speed about, about what's happening at the town farm. And I only think that we just need to take that time just to make sure that we're going to be moving because it's an important decision, not just for the farm, but for anybody else. We have a couple of new stores. What if Jerry Hardware comes up? He has a new store, and he wants to have a bigger sign. Why are we going to say no to him? 
So I, I guess it's just, it's, I think that this, it's, we don't need to make this decision tonight. We shouldn't. We should wait for our next town manager. We should review all the things that Tony Santilli is working on with the farm, with cleaning up the farm, and, and make a motion after that. All right. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? What's our comments from Matt, the public? What, what's our surrounding neighbors? I mean, do we know what South Kingston has for signs? I mean, I see people, businesses, and other things with pretty large signs out there. I would have to get back to you on that. I don't know. Right. So the farms had signs out there since way before Mr. Farrell owned it. If you drove by. If you drove by, you would see that, you know, when they sold corn, they have a sign out there for corn. Um, pumpkins, the sale of pumpkins. It's a farm. I know it's zoned residential, but it's obvious that the zoning is wrong. I don't even know why it's not farmland or something compatible to that. Um, it's crazy that we're going to take every little piece of property now and tear it up and say this isn't for that and that's not for this, where we should come up with an ordinance for uniform signs across this town. Um, presently their operation at summer, they're operating. Um, if we're going to do something with signs, we need to do it something uniform across the whole town um, and make everybody abide by it. We don't want what we went through with Trillo. That was a disaster. And if a lot of people read the ruling on that, I think there would be a lot of disappointment in this room and throughout the town on actually what Mr. Trillo paid for that. So presently, I don't have a problem with the signs that are there, but we need to come up with an ordinance that's uniform to everybody. Thank Mark, you. do you remember off the top of your head, I think it's a great point that Ricky made, what was the, the fine that, that you had, your office had recommended and what was the fine that Mr. Trillo actually paid? I, I don't recall the numbers off the top of my head. The fine was supposed to be, uh, per the ordinance, up to $500 a day. I, I think it was in the $30,000 range, between 25 and 35, I can't recall the exact number. And I think the fine came in, uh, Judge DeCubulus fined him. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, it was 2,500 or 3,500. Because I know the discussion that we had at the time, and I believe Jesse was you that brought it up, is that if you knew that your fine would be so low, why wouldn't you want to go ahead and just, you know, for campaigning especially, you know, break the ordinance because you could, you could pay for the fine. And correct me if, I, if it was you, that I thought it was you, but, but I know somebody in the council brought that up, but I think it's an excellent point. I mean, I know people don't like the yard signs out there anyway, so to, to make it even a bigger of a precedent that you can have one just doesn't seem right. Yeah, that, I, that was me with the Trillo case. The difference with that case is that um, Trillo did that without permission, so he was intentionally violating the ordinance. This is um, an owner asking for permission to do this, so that's why what we're, you know, that's why I would send it to zoning and let them make that decision. But they would be changing the ordinance then, though, right? So, so what we're doing now would be saying to, to, to zoning, we're giving you authority to change the ordinance, and does not come back to us, as the chief said. So they could then say, okay, 25 feet is all right, and then we'd see these signs all over 25 feet without coming to us or going to zoning. That would be law. I we're think that changing the law. This is, is right, for, Mark? I believe this is for a variance specifically. So it wouldn't be an ordinance change, correct? Right. And that's correct. This is this would be um, um, a variance, and uh, the zoning board uh, reviews each of these applications on a case by case basis. So it would not modify the ordinance. And then also, this is a eight, uh, three by eight sign, so it's, it would be 24 square feet. I think it's, I think the proposed sign is 24. 24 uh, square okay. feet. Instead of and instead it, of two by ten, it'd be three by eight. And it may be it may be double sided. Right now. Is this all signs, or is this the one sign he has by the, the trailer there, the food, food court there? It's just one sign, right? I didn't read it, because I didn't think it was this landmark decision we are going to make tonight. So. Not landmark, I just breezed but over it, and I said, oh, okay. Well, it's impactful okay, for the town, right. though, Patrick. Because right. you're not talking about the food truck. That's, that's just there, and, and you know, everyone knows I've had an objection about that, too. It's a historic farm, and there's a food truck there. But no, he's talking, it's in the package. It's a, it's a, it's a nice sign. If it was proper yeah. size, it would be fine. 
Yeah, but the a, thing if is, I could just clarify, he, so if I just, clarify one fact for you, it's it's square footage, so it's right. three by eight, right. twenty four feet. So they sure. zoning said you should ask for right. you yeah. should ask for twenty five square feet. Right. If you want two of them, that's where you're gonna, your right. variance is going to be. And then it's if I correctly, the sign's like probably a hundred hundred twenty five feet from the road. It isn't like Jerry's paint shop, which is probably you know thirty five to forty feet from the road. So there's a big difference there in need here. I don't think Jerry's is going to come you know, in front of us the next meeting asking for a bigger sign. In fact, I think he's trying to turn people away. That, that guy's so busy. Every time I go in there, I can't get in the damn place. But remember, so. Patrick, as far as this goes, it, it's, um, we have many other issues we're working on right now with the farm, with cleaning it up, with, with he, he's had infractions that we're working with. Uh, we haven't really spoken out loud to the town about it because we're trying to clean it up and have Tony work with him. So my objection is why give one more thing until we've seen some really good faith on the farm, our town farm being cleaned up and not no longer having junk on the farm. We had to have DEM go out there. Jim Mandy brought DEM out there to take a look at it. So I'm not saying we're not going to do it. Did DEM the find anything? They found a lot of different things out there. They found some the tanks. They found a lot of trucks. They found refrigerators are, are out there. Were there any violations? They said they didn't have to violate, but they had felt enough to bring it out there. But There's no enough violation. junk out there. No violation. Patrick, so, yeah. I'm not going to debate it with you. It's just, it's just that we have things that we're doing with, with the farm to take a look at to see if he's following in our ordinance. And, and, and I mean, again, it's a town-owned farm. The, the, the town should have the right to be able to have it be clean and respectful. This is a town-owned farm, so it's important otherwise, to make it that point. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in front of us. It wouldn't be in front of us otherwise. The reason it's coming is we have to, in order for the most people who ask for these kind of variances and go before the planning and zoning boards for an exception, right. they go on their own. In that's this right. case, we're the owners of the property, so that's why it's before us. And we have to basically say yes or no that the application can go to planning and zoning because we're technically the owners. So that's what's that's the piece that's this before This is an us. existing sign that's been up there, right? And well, then, actually, but then the planning and down. zoning will make the decision as to whether or not they are going to allow for the exception. We're I, not I voting on the it. exception tonight. I, I, I can move him to planning. I have no problem. Right, is there anyone else? Yes, Catherine. And uh, just state name and address, please. <clears throat> Catherine Celebrotto, 48 Earls Court. Mr. Santilli is our building inspector. He decided that he, that this wasn't a good idea to increase the signage. And so, you know, we never seem to trust our staff. He didn't just make this decision off the top of his head or because he was having a bad day. He decided that this, he should not get a larger sign. The other thing about that farm is this. This guy really has a sweetheart deal. I ride by there and all I see are landscaping trucks and they're very unsightly. When I ride by there, I want to see a pristine farm. I don't want to see dump trucks and everything else that he's got there. And he's running a full-scale business out of that. I, I wonder how much time he's given to the farm and how much time he's given to the landscaping business. But again, Mr. Santilli is our building inspector. He decided no, no increase in sign, it wasn't warranted. So I don't know why we're always contra uh, contradicting our, our staff. We, we hire them to make decisions like this. End of story, you should be supporting him. It doesn't matter that Farrell went through the planning and zoning and they got another decision and all that. This is a town employee, he's been doing his job for a long time and I don't understand why we don't support our town employees when they make these type of decisions. Thank you. The reason Santilli, Councilman Mannix, is that's his job. If, if, the office, if the ordinance reads 20 square feet or 18 or 24 square feet or whatever it is, he has to defend that and then the plaintiff goes to planning. That's the way it works. But the only reason he's here tonight is because we own the property and he leases from us. So I have no problem with having him run the farm, go to planning, and ask for a variance. I have no problem. All right, thank you. Anything else from council members? And Ms. Celebrato, you do make a good point in you know, having faith in the town staff, but we should also have faith in the boards that we put together um, to make these decisions as well. That's why we have the zoning board. So we appoint members to that board for these reasons. So you know, I'm fine sending it to them and I would trust their, uh, their judgment on this. I guess I have to stick with the, the we, we should wait. You know, we, we've recently, either he has already or he's planning on planting a crop of hemp. 
and I don't know that the town really wants to have the town farm have that on it. Um, it's just a fact that's, that's out there, and I just think that the town manager coming in needs to work with this because the town needs to be made aware of the conditions going on. It's the town farm after all. Damn Trillo ruined it for everybody. <laughs> Damn. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All no. opposed? No. Motion approved four to one. Item number 28 is a motion to approve the agreement between IBPO Local 303 Police and the Town of Narragansett for a three-year term beginning July 1st, 2019, and authorizes the, authorizes the Town Manager to sign the same. So moved. A second. Discussion. Um, so this um, has um, modest salary increases and has changed to the language for the promotional process. Is there anything that you would like to add, Sean? <clears throat> Yes, there's also uh, a change to the promotional period for newly promoted officers from three months to six months. And there's a change for the health care buyback uh, going from a two-tier to a uh, three-tier. Thank you. Any comments from the council? Right, any comments from the public? Richard. Again, we're having. Just name a, and address, please. Yeah, yeah. Richard Van Gomersh, uh, 9 Mountview Road this day. Uh, once again, this is a crucial matter that there should have been at least a slide so we can uh, appreciate or not appreciate what the contract is. However, I will once again oppose. Uh, a COLA, especially for new employees, we must end this foolishness now. We are being ripped off. Maybe I can accept being ripped off by retirees and current workers, but this has to end. And we don't end this gravy train. This gravy train is killing this town. It is eating up our budget, and we continue on with this nonsense policy that made sense 60 years ago when public employees were paid nothing, and who cares about 3% of nothing? Now they are paid a rather substantial sum of money, and we continue this foolishness. Thank you. Stanley. Stan Wojciechowski, Narragansett. Uh, I, I, I looked at the uh, looked at the document, and I was actually happy to see two percent, a two percent increase in salary. And that's kind of nice. My uh, Social Security check that I told you before went up 2.67. So now uh, it sounds like there's a step in the right direction here, as we're looking at two percent increases rather than three percent increases. Uh, so I, I commend I commend them for what they've done, and I hope they will continue to continue this financial financial awareness. As far as the, as far as the pensions, I'm not I don't know the details, but I was impressed with the two percent. Thank you very much, Chief. As I mentioned, it was a modest um, increase this year, and part of what's going on, we've, we've made a lot of reforms with many of our unions, as you've known, over the last five years, going to one health plan for the four unions, which was very big. We had some health plans that were in the high 20, over what, almost $30,000 a year, so that was a fix that we made. I don't want to go over all that. But what part of what's going on with these contracts is we're also going to be staggering them, them so the town staff and the leadership in the town will be able to have the union negotiations in separate years because it's sometimes a big burden to have them all at once. So um, any other comments or questions? Not on this issue. Okay. So, yes. Yes. So, on, so what's the current call around a retirement? in the town for police officers? So 3%. 3%. So when we retire, somebody retires today, they get a 3% COLA? Yeah, I believe they have to be uh, 52 years, years of age. Okay. And it's presently suspended. But. 
All right. Just so everybody knows, that's, that's what it is. Yes, Catherine. Catherine Celebrato, 48 Earls Court. This is the point where I usually get up and rebut Mr. Vangamish. And I argue for a Kohler, and I argue against any potential take back for a Kohler. But frankly, after the pension board's vote to give Mr. Riley, a Mr. Matthew Riley, a pension without exercising any due diligence at all, and everyone on that pension board who voted for, the, for a pension for him is a representative of an employee um, organization or union in this town. And I, and I have to say to myself, do these people not understand how lucky they are? To get a 3% compounded COLA, there are thousands of retirees across the state and current workers, teachers, state workers, police and fire, who will never see a COLA. But we are generous to our town employees. But I think that they owe us something in return, the taxpayers. And I think that when you're on a board, a pension board, that you should exercise, as I said, due diligence, a search for the truth. And you shouldn't be just jamming somebody's pension you know, through as quickly as you possibly could. So I am very ambivalent about arguing for 3% compound. And it's a 3% compounded COLA, which starts in 2021. This compounded COLA will substantially increase Mr. Riley's pension from maybe like 1.7 million he would have received to 2.5 million. Mr. Riley contributed. His actual contribution is about $150,000. That's some return. And that's fine. I have no problem with it, honest to God. I really don't. I think COLAs have to keep you. Um, even with inflation, and traditionally it's been 3% the, the inflation. But I, I still have a problem with this. I have a problem with these people who represent the town employees on a pension board voting for this man's pension, and so quickly, without, without even considering. I, it was just, to me, beyond the pale, okay? Just beyond the pale. The other part of this contract is it sets up different ca uh, categories of employees. If you happen to have come in in the last five years, then you're not going to get, I guess, health care for your spouse and a whole bunch of other stuff you're not going to get anyway. But the people who have been here a while, they're going to get something better. How do you have two categories? How do you have two groups of employees, like, say, patrol officers? This guy's in this car. He's going to get something more than you are. But because you came in later, you're not going to get it. It doesn't make any kind of sense. The benefits and, and, and salaries and stuff are supposed to be even across the board. I don't, you know, I, and I know this is how, what cities and towns are doing now. The new people coming in, they're really not getting what other people received. But I don't think that's fair. But I'm really pissed off about Matthew Riley. Thank you. The, um, well, you can make a motion to do that. But right now, um, is there any comments or questions on this? All right. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five. Motion approved five to zero. Yes. Item 46 to the front of the agenda. I'll second. All right. Um, all in favor. A lot, of the, a lot of these folks are here for that one, so that's a got a late night here. So appreciate any courtesy anybody can provide. You guys put a library motion on every meeting, so um, all in favor. Aye. Aye. All opposed. No. No. Motion fails two to three. Our next item. I'm going to have to gut it out out there. Is item number 29, a motion to approve the amendment to the URI crew Middlebridge lease at 95 Middlebridge Road between the town of Narragansett and the University of Rhode Island at the annual payments quoted, contingent upon the approval of URI. So moved. Second. Discussion? Are there any questions for um, Steve Wright, Parks and Rec Department? All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved five to zero. Item 30 is a motion to approve the purchase of one new John Deere Gator all-terrain vehicle for Narragansett Town Beach from Howard Johnson Incorporated in the amount of $17,044.40. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. Just, just so everybody knows, this comes out of, I believe, the Beach Enterprise Fund, so it does not come out of the taxpayer's pocket. 
Anything else? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Item 31 is a motion to approve the proposal from Priscilla Bolt and Associates to provide professional survey services required for phase three of the road improvement project in the amount of $17,155.50. So moved. Second. So this is getting us started with um, phase three work. I know that phase two is is in, in its and um, is, is ongoing. Um, are there any questions on this? Mike, can you come on up and just give us a timetable on how phase two is doing right now and what anticipated to start for phase three? Good evening. So we're in the uh, uh, final stretch of Phase two, we're on the last nine roads. We just finished Carver Lane. Um, D'Amber's moving up to Choctaw and Channing Drive in Bonnet Shaws to finish those within the next couple of weeks. And then we'll be completing the remainder list of roads in Metatuxet for the rest of the construction season. Hopefully we should be done with these this fall. And that'll give us the winter to work on the next six into the first round of phase three, hopefully for the early spring or mid to late spring. And could you just remind everybody if they want to take a look at where their road is exactly where they need to, to look on your website? Yeah, all the phasings on the town website in the DPW um, uh, page under the uh, road bond. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, this is a professional serv services associated with this, which sometimes we can hit snags with, as we did in phase two, if people recall, um, because of prop uh, not properties, because of roads that are close to wetlands and water. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Item 32 is the motion to approve the purchase of one new jot. John Deere utility tractor with flail mower through Padula Brothers Incorporated in the amount of $96,847.09. So moved. Second. Discussion. I'll speak on this one, Matt. Go ahead. So this is replacing a vehicle that's coming up on 25 years. So DPW has done a great job. They've kept a vehicle 25 years in the system. We can't even get parts for this vehicle anymore. This vehicle came up five years ago, but was denied. Denied because of cuts that were made in the town. We didn't have the money. The vehicle back then was 20, more than $20,000 less than what it is today. So, probably should have bought it then, but now we're gonna pay the 96,000 and it's a needed vehicle. This mows everything on the edges of the roads, um, it's got the brush cutter, and I think they deserve a pretty good hand on a 25-year piece of equipment that they've kept up all this time. So just a little history on this. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the council? Right, any comments or questions from the public? Stanley. Dan Wojcicki, Narragansett. Uh, Hundred thousand dollars for a lawnmower, and granted, I, it's a fancy one. But to me, uh, John Deere is the Cadillac, and that's that's okay. But could, did we look at others like the Ferris? My 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 landscaper, he runs around with these Ferris lawnmowers, which actually appear to be more commercial oriented. They don't have the pizzazzy looking outside, you know, they're a uh, plain Jane type of thing that cuts. Uh, ha have we looked at trying to uh, uh, see a more commercial unit that might be cheaper than this $100,000? That's, that's all I ask, thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved five to zero. Item 33 is a motion to read, pass, and adopt as a second reading an ordinance and amendment of Chapter 731 of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of Narragansett, Rhode Island, entitled Zoning, specifically adding new text reg regulating the medical use of marijuana. So moved. Second. 
Um, this is the second reading, so if there's no new information, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion. Motion approved four to one. Item number 34 is a motion to introduce, read, pass, and accept as a first reading an ordinance and amendment of chapter 731 of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of Narragansett, Rhode Island, entitled Zoning, at section 3.2 official zoning map, rezoning two properties to comply with designations assigned in the 2017 Narragansett Comprehensive Plan land use map. So moved. Discussion. Um, this is a first reading, but on one of these items, we had a request to the planning department director, community development, to limit the number of uses available to the one of the two properties discussed here. So the two properties are the smaller lot in the Westmoreland area um, between the Glen Oaks condominiums and DPW that we voted to change to industrial, and then a property in the south end of town near Aunt Carries that we voted to light business. So um, I'm going to ask if um, either the applicant or uh, the head of community development would want to summarize what they have presented to us. Good evening, Mr. President and members of the council. Um, as you recall, after you closed the hearing last time and showed favor, built favorable uh, inclination on these two parcels, you did instruct us to draft a, a list of uh, uses that would be appropriate for the, for the parcel on West Mullen Street. I do not believe you gave me any specific instructions on the other parcel at the south end. Uh, looking at the uh, lot P, I'm sorry, Platte P, lot 293, uh, rezoning it from R40 to IA. I looked at all the uses allowed in IA, Industrial Limited. Uh, there are up to 88 possible uses. And I went through that list, um, trying to identify properties, uh, uses rather, that uh, clearly do not make sense. It's a for a parcel of that size. It's only 30,000 square feet of land, which for an industrial lot is quite small, actually. And um, some of them are just, just totally inappropriate, things like a stone quarry. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't try to have a quarry on a quarter, three quarters of an acre lot. So many of the uses similar to that came right out. Uh, others would not work uh, because they were inappropriate to being um, uh, directly adjacent to the residential property to the west, the Glen Oaks condos, and the other property owned by Mr. Durkin uh, that did not get rezoned, which is a three-acre site, and it's also adjacent to the town highway garage. So certain uses did not lend themselves to being uh, appropriate to being in proximity to those two uses. Um, so things like outdoor storage of boats, um, there were many other potential uses that just would not be appropriate to be close to a residential or a town uh, operation. And then the third category of, uh, that I looked at were things that just were impractical. And um, as I said, in a way, some of them like stone quarry, not impractical. Um, others that were not practical were things like um, an incinerator. Uh, commercial dock or pier, well, there's no waterfront. So uh, that was what led me to the, the list that you have in your, uh, as attached to the agenda item. And you have actually two lists, my working list, which has the, the highlighting, and then the final list known as addendum A. Uh, the highlighted area on the working list are the, identifies the uses that I'm recommending be eliminated, and the non-highlighted areas are the uses I am recommending be retained in the IA zone. In the end, when you look at the uh, addendum A, you'll see that uh, we eliminate 51 uses and we allow 37, some by special use permit, a couple by uh, as accessory uses, most by, uh, by right. So Mike, just to, just to reiterate, the highlighted, you're not recommending. Correct, that's okay. in the working document, yes, the yellow highlighting indicates all the things that I'm suggesting come out. And everything that's not highlighted would, everything not highlighted from that list goes over to addendum A, 
and that is the addendum that we would attach to the ordinance itself. So if you've worked with the applicant on this list, um, then in, if, there's an, if there's agreement from both you and the applicant, then I guess I would turn it to the council if there's any designation that they would not include there, um, unless I'm mischaracterizing that. Well, we did, we did correspond. Um, I can't say that the list that I provided you is a consensus list. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Durkin sent me a list uh, with a certain number of items that he thought could be eliminated. Uh, it was much less than the list that I provided you. He had a dozen or so to be eliminated. Um, I took that as an advisory comment, but then I applied the three standards I just mentioned to you to give you the list that I've got here. Uh, you may want to uh, ask Mr. Durkin to spend to explain his position on the matter. Yep, all right, so uh, would uh, the applicant or his attorney want to weigh in on that regarding the recommended list? All right, so that, I know that didn't come to the microphone, so Mr. Doherty said he was satisfied. All right, so any questions from the council? All right, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Thank you. Item number 35 is a motion to approve the contract amendment with Dupreet Engineering Incorporated for administrative services during construction for the William C. O'Neill bike path in the amount of $19,775 at their quoted hourly rates. So moved. Second. Discussion. I think it's important to note, um, Chief, that this is reimbursable. Yes. All right. Just for the record, any other comments or questions? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved five to zero. Item 36 is a motion to approve the lease agreement with T-Mobile for communication equipment at Point Judith Water Tank site. So moved. Second. Um, discussion. So Sean, this is not new. This is already existing in the contract that just ran out. Is that true? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Okay. So the contract John had run out maybe, maybe two months ago or so, so we're just going to re-up something that's already in existence, so no one needs to worry about more towers going up on top of that water tower? Yes, that's correct. Um, this this uh, lease uh, actually expired last year, uh, and it was an, an oversight or a it was uh, lost in a shuffle, and then there was negotiations as to the, the renewal terms. Uh, they initially wanted to uh, drop the, le the lease rate and uh, reduce their rent, but now it's um, it's uh, we've uh, come to agreement with them on that. Uh, they're paying going to be the same rent. We basically try to average out, and uh, so that all our tenants are paying the same rent uh, over the same periods and. Um, there is some uh, equipment changes that they do have proposed, but there's no new antennas there. It's, it's uh, um, more uh, just modifying their equipment or changing some antennas out. So they'll make some modif modifications, which is uh, uh, the application for the building permits in the zoning in, in the building department now, and we have to uh, uh, approve that part of that. Part of them getting their permit was that they had to come to the table and get their lease updated and agreed to. Thank you, John. John, I had a question. Are any of them? Uh Smaller units that they've been attaching the telephone poles been popping up in town while you're out here uh, as, recently. Uh, I believe some have. I don't know. I believe the ones that come up in town. Have and they been, don't uh, need permission for that. They just come in and it's like the Wild West, right? Yeah, I believe so. I think there was a, a state, um, yeah. a new state legislation. Or yeah. a Chief, I think this is something that we need to address and get ahead of it because um, the problem is everybody's streaming and they need more capacity, so they need these smaller units that put out. And I know some towns are actually charging a fee for each unit, right? And so, I mean, there's something that I think we should take a look at. What do you think, John? I believe that uh my predecessor had some information on that, and, right. and uh, that I can look and that up as well. We have had some some uh, inquiries. We have like a dozen right now, right, about throughout town. 
Uh, I'm not sure how many are throughout town. I think. Yeah, if anybody wants, there's one right by the tower down there in the pier, right near the Coast Guard house. It's a great looking barrel, narrow looking barrel thing. Where well, they're like, what, about four feet by two feet, something like that? Yeah, some are different. I know yeah. some of them can just be a smaller, just a, like a, a Yeah, a these are starting pole. to spring up, and I think we should get ahead of it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved five to zero. Item 37 is a motion to approve the purchase of one new video surveillance system for the public safety building from Lantel Communications Incorporated in the amount of $63,041.76. So moved. Second. This is a capital project at the police department. Are there any questions or comments? I have a couple questions. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I see this is <clears throat> from uh, the acting chief, uh, Mr. Sutton. I don't yep. think he's here, right? So. Yes, I'm very familiar with the project, though. Great. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple questions about the characteristics of the system. Yes. Um, so I see it's a new state-of-the-art system. Uh, are there going to be additional cameras um, compared to what's currently there? Yes, we uh, currently have 16 cameras, uh, all uh, recorded. Uh, we're going to be adding another four, a uh, couple for the fire department. Then we had to add a couple because of the fencing that we put up in the back lot to a. And are those uh, new cameras uh, interior or exterior? Some are interior, some are exterior. Okay. I, I believe um, I know two outside for the fencing are, are exterior. I'm not sure about the, uh, the fire department. I have to get back to you on that. Okay. Um, is there typically any, any um, external review process for adding um, outside surveillance to town property? Or is it just something that the department can just decide they want to do? Does it, There's no review process. Like private, basically uh, resident privacy um, concerns. Right. It's, um, the cameras are not directed into the parking lot and that it's all directed towards our um, our cruisers and our fence line. Make so sure it only captures. And and, okay, so it's only yeah. capturing on the property. It's yes, it's uh, capturing public safety property. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't. Yeah, get we're not scanning a lot or anything like that. No facial recognition <laughs> software. No, no <laughs> facial recognition. No. Not yet. No. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah. I had a quick question. Um, sure. I'm assuming these are all hardwired, right? I believe so. Yes. Did but try I, to, IT would be the better person to ask that right. question. Right. Did, did they try to get a price on wireless? Would that be cheaper? Actually, no. No? No, it's cheaper to wireless. Dan, yeah, just come up. Right. Yeah, it's actually cheaper to go wired than it is to wire wireless. Really? Yep. Because you have all the transmission equipment to add on to the price of the camera. The wire's cheap compared to the extra right, cost. Right, right. So they're using the same conduit, the same uh, cable, or they're using new cable? Transferring from the old analog system, we're replacing oh, that okay. cable so to the new network right. stuff. Well, the conduit's already in place, and Correct. they just got to yep. snake it's running it. new All cable right. into All right. it. Yep. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, Richard. Okay, this says one new video surveillance system. Do we have more than one? Does this replace something? Yeah. It, it is somewhat it's, puzzling. There's some new cameras, and then we have old antiquated cameras that are being replaced. It's all part of one interconnected system, but it's talking about all our cameras. How much do we spend on surveillance in the, for uh, the building? Is this the only? Cost for surveillance. This is this covers all our cameras. Yes. So there is no other cost for surveillance. We recently purchased a new uh, DVR. That's what holds the data from, from the recording of the video. There's no other bills coming. If that's what you're asking. And this is for the actual this, or is this just a, a yearly rental? This is the purchase of the cameras. So these are the cameras that go into our, our Sally port when we bring prisoners in, our cell block, our, for our evidence room, for the lobby, for the parking lot. It's all the, our cameras. So there is no annual maintenance charge or this type of thing? I would defer to IT in that. No, negative, no maintenance charge. All right, yeah, this, you know, it, it is a rather large amount of money. Thank you. Chief, what's the shelf life on this? You get 20 years on it, right? 
20 years. Okay, again, this is a capital project and the police department. Are there any other questions or comments regarding this? All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved five to zero. Item 38 is a motion to approve the purchase and installation of new carpet tiles for the police department from Shaw Industries Incorporated, pursuant to the source well contract in the amount of $13,933.99. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Item number 39 is a motion to accept the fiscal year 2016 Burn Justice Assistant Grant Award entitled Technology Update 2016, the amount of $15,205. So moved. Second. Discussion. So items number 39 and 40 are linked, and you'll notice that the dollar amount is the same for each of them. So um, one is a, a, the grant, and then one is the uh, reimbursement, but I'll, if um, the chief wants to talk about that in more detail. Go That's ahead. correct. We uh, early this year learned that this grant was going to be open opening, so we uh, put an application in to uh, expand and upgrade our inventory of tasers, which is our less lethal force option. Uh, it was uh, approved. So uh, item 40 is the actual items that uh, 39 is discussing. It's 100% reimbursement. All right. So for item 39, any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 40, a motion to approve the purchase of eight tasers, a taser training suit, three taser holsters, and a training target for the police department from Accent Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $15,205. So moved. Second. Discussion? All Great job with the grant. Great job. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Item 41 is a motion to approve the annual software maintenance agreement with Vision Government Solutions, the amount of $17,791. So moved. Second. Discussion. No questions or comments from the Council of the Public? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Item 42 is a motion to approve the PC replacement program with Zones Incorporated in the amount of $35,941.38. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is a replacement, correct me if I'm wrong, of 34 of our oldest computers in the town, um, under the <coughs> town. Uh, any questions on that? All right. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item, I'm sorry, all opposed. Motion approved five to zero. Item number th 43 is a motion to approve the purchase of Microsoft Office 2019 from Dell Incorporated in the amount of $10,057.60. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion approved five to zero. Item 44 is a motion to approve the renewal of the Munis application services with Tyler Technologies Incorporated in the amount of $60,419 for fiscal year 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion. Right, people are familiar with the Munis software. Um, any questions or comments? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved five to zero. And item 45 is a motion to approve the network infrastructure upgrade project for information technology from three vendors, Zones LLC, Third Millennium Communications Incorporated, and Velocity Solutions for a total amount of $84,436.28. So moved. Second. Discussion. Um, why don't you explain what you're trying to do here? For the folks. Sure. My uh, colleague here, Caleb, is uh, spearheading this project. He can uh, give a quick briefing on the uh, project. Good evening. Uh, the original town network was put in in 2001 um, and has not seen any major upgrades since then. Wow. So this project aims to expand what's already there in addition to replacing a lot of the older aging equipment that we have in there, some of which is upwards of 10 years old. That makes sense. 2001, that's a long time for technology. Any other questions, comments? Uh, right. Thank you both. We got one question from for um, Dan. 
Catherine Celebrano. Oh, Catherine, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I just Go want ahead. to ask about this. This is going to make um, the town employees, it's going to be easier for them to retrieve information and, and I guess, process information, that type of thing. Is that that's what we're That's my understanding. Yeah. It increases okay. the linkages between them, but is, uh, let me know if that's incorrect. Okay, because I want to tell you that I, I received an email that I'm going to be charged $15 an hour for my subsequent um, um, access to public records acts requests. <laughs> The last time I sent one in, I think I asked about seven or eight questions, and I was told that in the future, I'd be charged $15 an hour. But that's fine, I'll pay the 15 bucks an hour, but this should make it a lot easier to get this information that I'm asking for, and maybe I won't have to pay 100 bucks for it, maybe just 50, thanks. Dan, did you want to comment? Thank you. Uh, this won't, unfortunately, increase the speed of those FOIA requests. Uh, this will increase the speed of the data, data crossing the network, but unfortunately the processing for some of those FOIA requests does require some manual labor um, to collect that and, and integrate it, so that's where the cost comes from those usually. I'm, Terry might be able to expound upon that, but this project won't help with that, unfortunately. No, I don't, okay. All right, any other questions? All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved five to zero. Item 46 is a motion to request a professional appraisal for the real property located at the former Belmont IGA building and 59 parking spaces, the library unit and the building currently occupied by Pier Liquors and nine parking spaces, the liquor store unit and the strip of parking spaces abutting the town of Narragansett's public safety building and running to Caswell Street, parcel C, plus the additional real property described in the purchase and sales agreement approved by the town on March 5th, 2018 and executed on March 12th, 2018. I'll make the motion. Take it. All right, discussion. This item comes from Mr. Pugh. Um, this item is, we are, this discussion is taking place in executive session regarding the sale of this property, so we just have to be careful in this discussion about breaching that executive session. The appraisal portion of this is part and parcel of that, so we are going to have to um, tread carefully because of um, the confidentiality issues associated with keeping this in executive session. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Um, well, um, certainly uh, due to the recent sale of the TRIO building, you have copies of this. Uh, back on uh, 614, June 14th, Gilbane sold the TRIO building to uh, the Newport Restaurant Group for $2.8 million. It's approximately half the square footage. Also, with that came uh, 57 parking spaces. So it's a similar sale, but it's a good comp, which defends the price that we paid for 20,000 square feet and a paying tenant and 68 parking spaces, 1.22 acres, and deeded access. So this is a basic request, respectfully request, um, an updated appraisal. Because of this new comp, I think it's important that we uh, know what the true value of uh, the Belmont building is. Certainly, there seems to be a commercial shift in the pier. There's a lot of activity with the, the Village Hotel. And there's some activity surrounding the theater. So I think there's... Uh, some dynamics going down there, and I think we need an updated appraisal. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the council? Anyone else from the public? Oh, you sure. Uh, oh, oh, you're going. Yeah, oh, okay, go. yeah. So, so I, it was about a month or so ago um, that Councillor Murray and I put a agenda item on to publicly list the building and to market the building. Um, that seemed like if you have a council that's looking to sell a piece of town property, that would be the most transparent and the most above board way to go about that process. Um, this council rejected that motion. Now, as we continue on in executive session, um, you know, related to this, to this property, the next thing to do would be to um, take a look at what's happening with real estate in South County 
residentially it is surging in this area. You're getting more affluent um, property owners. It does seem like that would also bleed over to commercial properties. We're seeing what happened with Trio. So that does seem to be the case. So if this council really does want to sell this building, then, th then we should do right by the taxpayers and do what is the most prudent and responsible thing, which is to understand the true value of the property. Um, and to go into any sort of negotiations at any point um, for, these, for this building really shouldn't happen without knowing what you have, without knowing the value. So I, you know, that's why we put this on. Uh, we think it makes a lot of sense. You really want to know what you have. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of a, that's the intent of this motion. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? No, no comments, guys? You know, you're I, not concerned with the... From Patrick, again, the discussions have taken place in executive session. Um, no, well, anyone? this isn't about executive session. This yeah. is an up and down vote of should we get an updated appraisal, yes or no. It has nothing to do with the sale of the building. It has nothing to do with any activity surrounding that building. This is a common sense, base, basic defense of taxpayer assets to find the true value of the building due to the recent sale of the, of the TRIO building. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Um, Mr. DeStefano. Ted DiStefano, 94 Colonel John Gardner Road. Matthew, this is directed mostly at you because you seem to be the protagonist in selling, trying to sell the Belmont building. Why is this an executive session? Why don't we open the shades, open the windows, get some sun in, let us know what's happening to what was to be our building. Because we're trying to get the best price for the taxpayers. Oh, really? That's what we're trying to well, do. Well, let us hear that. Let us hear that. What are you hiding? We're not, there's nothing hiding. No really? one's hiding anything. Then let us know. We're taxpayers. I pay a good amount of taxes, which I'm happy to Any pay. real estate deal the town gets into, there's a, a executive, executive sessions leading sessions. up into it. I just spoke with an attorney, a partner at Hinkley Allen, and he said he never heard of an executive session for something other than personnel policies. So I have no idea what you're hiding, but maybe you could tell everybody. I'd like to remind people that it's not Salem in 1692 and don't throw out accusations when you have nothing to back it up. Mr. Vangermish. Yeah, I, I have been in the liquor store, not to buy by way, but to observe. I've been up to the second floor, and I remain stunned by why we ever made that deal. And I really urge every taxpayer in Narragansett to walk up that second useless floor. It looks beautiful from the outside, truly an architectural marvel from the outside and a complete zero in the inside. And uh, I do want always to make this point that there is no Belmont building. There is the old IGA market, the second useless floor internal, and then the liquor store. They are not connected. These are three separate parcels. And believe me, this town made its greatest error by buying that second useless floor. When you talk about square footage, it has to be useful square footage. And what we purchased was the most unusable <coughs> lot I've ever seen. Thank you. Ms. Foran. Uh, Carol Fortin, 10 Cross Road in Narragansett. I would encourage the council to get an appraisal on the building, especially based on that the Trio restaurant went for 2.8 million. I think we need to make sure 
uh, that we get the best price, that the council is fiscally responsible and gets the best price for the taxpayer. I surely don't support selling the, the uh, building, but I think uh, as a taxpayer, it is your fiscal responsibility to make sure we get the best deal. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Stewart. <laughs> Gloria. <clears throat> Gloria Roman, 33 Weefill Cove Road, Narragansett. For this whole time, Mr. Mannix, Ms. Lawler, and Mr. Lima, you have been telling us, the taxpayers, that your interest <clears throat> in not giving that building to the library is because you are fiscally responsible. If you are fiscally responsible, first, you would have advertised the sale of that building, not a backroom deal. That seems to be what you're doing. A sale, an advertisement to sell that building would draw up people from many other areas and people who have a lot more money. So you're not being fiscally responsible. You are doing whatever it is that's motivating the three of you for your backroom deal. The other issue is if we don't have an appraisal, a current appraisal of this building, how are you being fiscally responsible by selling it without a, a current appraisal? So your fiscally responsible claims don't hold anything. I hope that you three will start to realize that your fiscally responsible statements are not true. They're your covering for all of the backroom deals that you were doing. And you should be ashamed of yourself. And you owe us, the taxpayers, to be fiscally responsible. And you are not. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Stanley. I thought we had a, I thought we had some appraisals before we bought this, and uh, to us to keep on going and getting appraisal every year, every year, every year, get an appraisal. We know prices go up, and for us, you just get an appraisal year after year after year uh, with no specific reason at this time. I, I don't know if that's a wise decision. Uh, until you're really ready and actually have a sale in mind and, a, and you're really down that road a little further. So uh, I, I don't see that we should be getting appraisal after appraisal and paying that, paying for that with taxpayer money at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Mary Nato, 10 Second Street, near Narragansett. I, I disagree with selling the building, but if you are going to sell the building, you need to have a current real estate um, appraisal. Things in this town have gone crazy, as the two real estate agents would know, um, and everything goes up exponentially all the time, and people actually put houses on the market, and I think <coughs> actually put them on for one price and then raise the price because it's been so popular in the neighborhood. So please, if you're going to sell the building, make sure you're fiscally responsible. You should market it, and you also should do a new appraisal. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, come forward. Karen Chapshallow at 63 Wanda Street, Narragansett. 
I think it is highly unethical that you're even trying to sell it. I mean, highly. The fact that you're bullying all the supporters of the library is unacceptable. No matter where you go in this state, people are asking, what is going on in Narragansett? You're destroying the town, the three of you, because the trustees, by their affirmative obligation, are supposed to be planning for the library. And we've worked on it relentlessly for 10 years. You take over the office, and I hope it's the last time any of you ever see an office in this town. And first of, and secondly, Jesse and Patrick have really tried their hardest to, to act as advocates for the library. It is absolutely disgusting what you are doing. Unethical, and it's just beyond words. And I don't think there should be any discussion of selling the Belmont building. That's the place of the new library, and everyone in town knows it. And you're going on a very slippery slope. And you're always talking about um, things that are church related from the pulpit. And I don't know how you can do that and still have the kind of ethics that you are demonstrating. And sh the three of you have no appreciation for literacy and the library. You don't even have plans as to what your plan B is, if there is such a thing. But that is even a mistake, because you're supposed to be listening to the trustees. You can't even keep staff here, because they're leaving in droves. It's unbelievable. And people across the state know it. People across the nation are knowing it now, because of all the library information that's passed along. And it's just, you're disgracing the town. Oh, and by the way, Sue Am um, Sue, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but she had submitted the, the Narragansett Library to the Reader's Digest. We were voted number one best place in Rhode Island. Number one in our own town, the library. And you three are like ostriches looking, putting your head in the sand and totally ignoring it. Is there anyone else? Catherine. <clears throat> Catherine Celebrato, 48 Earls Court. This is supposed to be a discussion as to whether or not we should have an appraisal and it's deteriorated into a tax. And, you know, isn't somebody supposed to keep the discussion on track when it, when it veers off like this? I, I, I don't understand what's going on here, really. This is an open forum. This is a discussion about should or should we not have an appraisal, which we've already done two of them less than a year ago. But, but somebody has to, is it the town manager? I'm not sure. Who is supposed to keep discussion on track? And I just wish it would remain on track. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Um, just yes. go ahead. Yep. Mark, could you let us know what are, there are obviously certain criteria that can lead to an executive session. Can you tell us what the legal means in order to have executive session are? Um, in the Open Meetings Act, there are exceptions uh, that are enumerated. There are eight or nine exceptions. I can, I can pull them out and read them to you, but um, one is um, express uh, contract negotiations uh, that would be um, or could be put at risk uh, for effectiveness if it were done in public. So you can imagine trying to negotiate a deal uh, where you're advertising um, in advance of what your terms are going to be. Obviously, it, it, it puts you at a big disadvantage when you're trying to negotiate. So um, it falls within an express um, exclusion to the Open Meetings Act. So legally, having an executive session to discuss the sale of real property that the town owns is included in the open meetings violations exception for us to do? It's, it's allowed, specifically allowed. <clears throat> right, wait, thank wait, you. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm confused here. Uh, you're saying that this agenda item is a violation? No. 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 Somebody said. Okay. I just want to make that clear. 
questions? No, absolutely not. Right. The question was going right. into executive session okay. to all right. discuss. With all yeah. the fans going, I just want to make sure everybody understands that. Now, again, we had Adolfo appraisals, did two appraisals. First, it was for the condo, for the Belmont only. And then we, the deal changed, and we're going to update it appraisal. Now we have a new comp. When they did the updated appraisal the last time, I think it was $2,500. Now the only thing he had, he had that's changing for that updated appraisal, which was, I don't know, maybe six months ago, is we have a new comp of a light building within a stone's throw. This is very important information that needs to be put forth to find the true value of this building. Certainly, Jill, you understand that. It's, <clears throat> it's, it's, this is rudimentary. And again, we just bring Adolfo back, let him plug in this sale, and see what he comes up with. I mean, we're talking $240 a square foot compared to what we paid at $128 a square foot. They're two separate buildings, but this is for a professional appraisal, a licensed appraisal to be determined. Not something that's, oh yeah, well, it, you know, and then we're not marketing the building. That's another thing that bothers me. You know, we want to sell it, fine, but let's market it. We should be on top of that roof, screaming to the top of our lungs, buy me. You know, you want the best bang for the taxpayers. I don't know why it's, it's, a, it's a big secret. It's like we're not secret agents here. We, we need to let everyone know that we're selling it. And I, I just, it, it's almost like, Matt, you've been saying it's a disaster, it's a disaster. We should have never purchased it along with Mr. Pandemish. Well, fine, that's okay. But it, it's almost you're trying to fill a self-fulfilling prophecy. We got a great comp here. Let's plug that in and find a true value. Maybe we'll get more money for it. I just, and I don't even know what the sale price is. What is the sale price? Do you have that? I mean, is that secret? Is that something that's secret? We're in executive session discussing that, Patrick. Well, shouldn't, Mark, Mark isn't it prudent for a town or anybody who wants to say, sell any real property to evaluate the property, get, get a, a market value opinion, and put it out there at a certain price. Isn't that the, the normal procedure for every other property that's sold in this damn state? It I doesn't want, make any sense. You know, Patrick, I, it's not, not important what my opinion is. You, you, you guys are the council members, and um, I don't mean to put you on Mark. I don't mean to put you on the You asked him if it was question. prudent, Patrick. His, yeah. job is not pr his job is to give us legal advice and to help draft our contracts regarding this. Yeah, but this isn't an, uh, a labor contract that we're, we're trying to save money. We're trying to get as much money out of this building. This is, this is for taxpayers. You want to sell it? Okay, let's sell it. But let's, let's do it properly. You know, I, I just don't get it. I, you know, I, I, it, should be on, it should be on LoopNet. It should be on the East Coast Commercial Property Exchange. I, I just, and it's not there. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. It's almost like you want this to fail. You want it to fail. You want to sell it short. You want to make it into a disaster for, the, for a good narrative for the 2020 election. I saved the day. Thank God we got out of that yeah. Belmont bill. That's what, that's what I suspect. Couple Thank you for your suspicions. Just a few additional thoughts um, based on the audience uh, comments. Couple, uh, couple things for you, Stanley. You asked a couple questions, so um, I'll chime in on those. Um, you asked why would we do another appraisal a year after we just had one done. So one of the talking points that I have used to explain the cost of the new library to the taxpayers has always been for the average homeowner, um, the taxes would be $32 a year, additional to what they currently pay. That was always based on a $400,000 house, which was the average home price in Narragansett. 
And that was what we had been saying for the last year. However, since we started saying that a year ago, the home average home price is $500,000 now. So it's gone up 25% in a year. That's why we need to do an appraisal. Because the market has changed in Narragansett. Everyone knows real estate has, is booming here. So we're seeing it residential. We see that 25% increase. We need a new appraisal on this building for that reason. Secondly, you said, why do it now? Why not wait until we have a signed deal or we have an offer? How do, here's the thing. How do you know we don't? How do you know that we're not going to go into executive session right after this and vote to sell the building to a buyer? You can't know that because it's all a secret. So we're asking for these things for a reason. And because it's always an executive session, nobody in town is able to know what's going on. So that's a problem. Third. Since the, you know, since the election and since this term started, Patrick and I have put on items to request an RFP to find out how much it's going to cost for this project in this building. The council voted no. Then we asked to list it, to market it, and to price it. The council voted no. Now we're asking for an appraisal so we can get a value of the building. Again, we'll see what happens, but my guess is this, this council is going to vote no again. So why is this council willing to be uninformed? Why does this council want to be uninformed? Why, why are they willfully ignorant on this issue? It's a question that we're not getting answered and we're probably not going to get answered anytime soon. So I have a problem with that. I don't understand why we're not getting an appraisal here, but I guess we'll vote and we'll see uh, if I'm wrong on that one. And I, and I guarantee you, Adolfo, it cost 2500 for the, for, the, for the major update we had from going from a condo to a, a carved out lot. That was 2500 I, This is probably under $1,000, and I bet the library would pay for it. Maybe that. You know? All right, thank you. Nancy. Nancy DiNuccio, Vanderbilt Drive. I'm just hoping that when you make your votes on this, if you could at least tell us why you're voting in whatever way you're voting. I kind of know why uh, Jesse and Patrick would be in support of this, but if you're not in support of it, I'm just curious as to why you wouldn't be. What's the if, you could, if you could tell us, I think that would be very helpful. Thank you. I think it made it clear that we want to tread carefully with executive session and not say things that would jeopardize the deal. You can grunt and groan all you want. That's my, that's my reason. Lori. Grunt and groan. Go ahead. Uh, so several quick things. Uh, Matt, both you and Jill, when the building was being negotiated to be purchased, over and over again said it's optional to be in executive session and this should be out in the open. So I just want to say that That's was not your true. Argument. I said it at the very end when the final contours of the deal came, so that's not accurate, actually. So you said it once? I, you said, didn't it say at, it? I said it at the end of the process so you when said I wanted once, the deal to come forward. you didn't say it over and over again? I didn't did not say it over and over again. So you said I mean, it maybe, I mean, maybe I said it after that, but I said it at the end of the process. Okay. But you did so, say... Go ahead. Just make your comment, Lori. Just go ahead. Well, maybe if you could stop interrupting me and I had my three minutes, that would be good. Um, so, yes. So, that is one thing that, for whatever reason, you wanted that to be out in the open and now you don't want it to be out in the open. There's something else significant that I want to point out about the appraisal, which was January 2018, which is basically exactly what we paid for the building. Now you have a building the size of our current library selling for 2.8. So I guess our- half, half the square footage for of, the same price. Of what, of what we purchased. But again, the Maury Luchin's library is now worth more than a million dollars. So if you really want to be fiscally responsible, you can let us move forward with this project, move into the Belmont building, and sell our current building, which now, miraculously, has gone up in value. And that reduces what the town is on the hook for, which is what we've been saying all along. At the same time, you might want to consider restoring our budget 
to level funding because as you know, we will not get state reimbursement. And that will, again, just dismantle this wonderful educational institution that we all love. And 70% of us voted for the Belmont Building. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all in favor. They, I just want to add one no. thing. I don't believe this is a comp, Patrick. You're, you're, the, the building that is the Gilbane building is an empty shell that's been empty for many, many, many years. The sale of TRIO for 2.8 has frontage on a main road, an ocean view, and a build out. You need to, any appraiser, commercial appraiser, would take the build out aspect out. This is not a comparable sale. And as far as the appraisal, I'm not going to comment on that because that is a conversation we're having in an executive session. Now, that's a misnomer. That's another narrative. False narrative. I mean, Patrick, that's my opinion. It's well, opinion of well, a couple just, of you just, you just made me. my argument. This is why we no. need a professional licensed commercial appraisal to reassess the Belmont space. And I mean, the appraiser that, I spoke to said you can't compare sale, an empty shell with a built out restaurant building. Well, I, the who, restaurant. Who was that? Were they a licensed appraisal? They were. Well, then let's get them. Let's hire them. Let's get them down here. Patrick, I'm against this. You know this. And I refuse to have a conversation with you that's going to be arguing. I'm not going to yeah. argue with you. Yeah, God I forbid if we have information to make solid decisions on for taxpayers. Okay? Let's go ahead and give away the store so we can have a false narrative for the 2020 election. Thank God we saved this disaster. That's what's going on here. All right. All in favor. Mark, a uh, quick question for you. Uh, is there anything um, that an appraisal would inherently conflict um, with an executive session? Um, no. Uh, the, the issue of whether to get an appraisal or not um, really has no bearing on the executive session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. However, I believe that my thought process for voting no on this does. So it's valid. My thought process does. And, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. 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 Motion fails two to three. Our next item is our open for a public comment section. Please, I ask people to conduct themselves in an orderly, respectful fashion, and the comments of individuals ex ex in this portion of the meeting are not adopted or endorsed by the body. All right, anyone for public comment? Nancy. Uh, Nancy Dunashow, Vanderbilt Drive. Um, I see on your executive session that you're going to be discussing the town manager position. And I'm wondering if at some point you'll be able to report out about how many applications were received, how many interviews you're doing, how many people you're seeing, a little information for the public to make it as transparent as possible. I'm hoping that you'll be able to do that. Anyone else? Ms. Fortin. Still Carol Fortin. <clears throat> Um, I want to um, bring to the council's attention and to the town of Narragansett to, be, uh, to become aware of what I consider a public safety hazard on the causeway in Bonnet Shores. Especially on weekends, there are many walkers, bikers, parents pushing baby carriages going to Kelly Beach or to the beach club. The traffic is horrendous, and the patients, perhaps, of the residents who are not going to Kelly Beach or to the Beach Club is not very safe. So uh, they are passing, going over the double line, and they are passing uh, irresponsibly. Um, and what happens, because I almost got hit, uh, I was coming out of Camden. I apologize, but Matt does know what Camden is. And I was coming down, and there are pragmites. Now, the town cuts on uh, the pragmites, you know, and there is somewhat of a footpath if you happen to hit a dry spot. But these pragmites are tall. So as I'm coming around the corner, um, the person who was passing four cars on the double line was on my side. Now, I 
was able to stop and that vehicle just went on and then cut back in. Um, but I'm really concerned um, that this is going to be a financial issue, uh, not only for Bonnet Shores residents, but also for the town. Um, and I would like somebody to come in and uh, from the town and look at that. I don't know if there can be more of a cutback that would make it safer, but this is an accident waiting to happen. And I have also spoke at uh, the Bonnet Shores Council to make them aware, but I do know that it's the town that is cutting the grass there. So I don't know what the rules are, but I'm afraid someone is going to get hit or killed. We did have last year somebody got hit on their bike, but they did not get hurt. Uh, and I really think it's a huge financial risk um, for the town. So if somebody could look at that, I would appreciate it. Um, I'm also uh, disappointed that you did not vote yes to get an appraisal. Uh, and I know, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that you claim, your claim to fame is I'm always fiscally responsible and I'm going to do what's best to, for the town. I do not think you're doing what's best for the town by not getting an accurate appraisal, whether the building's been empty for years or not. Apparently, it seems to be a hot commodity. Um, so I think the appraisal would serve the town well. Um, and I'm also, I have a, another question, and I asked it before, and I don't see it popping up on the agenda. I'd like to know what happened to the RFP, to the current library. It's, you know, I could be wrong, but that might have been about a month ago. Uh, we've had no feedback on that. Uh, and I'm assuming that part of the RFP would be Mr. Lima's Part B. So I'd like to know what Part B is, uh, because Part A, which was studied for 10 years, isn't going forward. Uh, you've turned down uh, grant money. Uh, you've turned down a lots, tons of money, plus public grants, private money of donors well versed in their dollars who would have been able to donate and reduce or maybe have a no-cost uh, library. So I'm really concerned about that. One last thing I'll say, uh, on executive session, you know, yes, you know, your town solicitor is correct, and I'm not a lawyer. Uh, however, I really think this could be challenged in the court of law because you should have advertised this building for sale, vetted out a good price, then met in executive session with whoever was going to purchase the property. But this process has been done under executive session, and I do disagree with your solicitor. I do think that if somebody is willing to do it, they have a good court case. Thank you. Thank you. you. Sean, could you yes. look into the public safety portion of the comment Mrs. Fort made? Thank you. Suzanne. Uh, Susan Amaruso, 111 West Bay Drive, Narragansett, Rhode Island. And I'm disturbed with all the conditions of the sale, but my um, comments tonight is I think the town council has kind of missed the boat in calling attention to the library, the Maury Luton's Memorial Library, that they are the state winners in the Reader's Digest contest for the nicest places in America, 2019. So this is where they've received thousands of nominations, interviewed people, and they came up with 50 state winners. And right now, there is voting for the nicest place in the United States. So this is a national publication. It's not like some crazy thing. It's the Reader's Digest, very conservative. So I'd like to commend our librarians, because I don't think they're going to get it from the council, on what an absolutely wonderful job they do. And they've been recognized. And I did make the uh, nomination. And they did interview me, and I didn't want to give them a lot of details because actually I was talking about the librarians being very positive in a very toxic environment. And, um, but I did tell them how to research it because a lot of the things that are happening are unbelievable, like this wholesale, like why we have a building. It just, 
you know, I couldn't give them answers. So their comments were, as the people of this seaside town fight to save their library, the librarians go about their business serving the community. Narragansett's public library is so unassuming that you might drive right by it if you didn't know what you were looking for. But to the 15,000 people who make this seaside town their home, the library is where the knitting club meets, high schoolers hunker with tutors, preschoolers sit wide-eyed at story time, and where it's possible to miss how gracious the staff, where it's impossible to miss how gracious the staff is in the face of an existential threat. Recently, the town council voted to slash the facility's budget in half and put on hold for plans for a much needed new building for the 10,000 people who visit a month. The library may lose its eligibility for additional state funding, well, that's a given, putting five full-time and 14 part-time staffers' jobs in jeopardy. Jeopardy. The fight has gotten ugly at times with heated arguments at the town council meetings, and I think this, they saw this on our recorded sites of these meetings. And um, they continue to smile, making the library an oasis of civility, even as the battle rages around it. We have no say in politics, said Patty Arkwright. So we just go with the flow. We're just happy to serve the people who use our library. As soon as you come through that door, they make you feel, and these were my words, actually a quote, that you're the most important person in the world. Um, when my grandchildren come to visit from out of town, the first place they ask to go is the library. Supporters drop in regularly with um, gifts, cookies, blah, blah, blah. Um, but one time, an example is a woman told a librarian she was lonely and longed for a dog. Another patron came in and said she needed to move and she had to rehome a dog. And the library connected to the two people. Um, um, thank you. I, we're at I, the three uh, minutes. Uh, yeah. Well, I wanted to talk about the lady who gave the narrative, who's lived here for 90 years. And she said, we are the library. This town has always represented unity, education, and it has a certain amount of kind of like class to it. But this whole getting rid of a library, no one can believe it. And now it's a national issue. So please vote for them um, at readersdigest.com. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Just Dis Dis Wojciechowski and DiStefano are both. Um, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this was written about a week ago, and it was published in two um, local newspapers. Stopping a rogue town council. What do most citizens do when a town council goes rogue? Usually they just wait for the next election before taking any action. Well, that's not the citizens of Narragansett. When three of the, fine, the, the five Narragansett town council members decided to defy the will of the people recently by deeply slashing the library budget and by disregarding the referendum to fund the acquisition of the old Belmont building, by quietly putting the building up for sale, the Narragansett uh, residents, in a quiet but determined legal protest, garnered enough signatures to put three critical items on the 2020 ballot, one of which calls for the recall of rogue council members. These three people, led by council president Matthew Mannix, seem intent on either destroying our wonderful library or greatly diminishing its services and staff. But it is now totally apparent the town residents won't stand for it. Besides the three referenda for 2020, the residents have band together in create, creating the Love Your Library Coalition. The Love Your Library Coalition has been quite busy of late, putting up Love Your Library signs all over Narragansett, many are up in Bonnet Shores, attending town hall meetings to show their discontent with what the group of three are trying to do out to our library, meeting regularly to strategize on how we can save our library, and finally, working with competent attorneys to protect our rights, the rights of our citizens. The group trying to save the, our library has been called an angry m mob by Council President Matthew Mannix. They are anything but that. They are concerned citizens worried about their children's future, 
because three of the town's five council members don't seem to value a fine library, something so basic. They are concerned citizens who value the great importance of a modern library that reaches out to and interacts with its members. They will not go away. There is too much at stake for themselves and their families. Thank you. Stan Wojciechowski, Narragansett. Uh, I read in this fact book that, uh, that the population of Narragansett is 15,868 residents. And uh, I hear that uh, 55,109, I think it is. So it appears that uh, one third one third of the population of Narragansett voted for the library. Uh, my opinion, you know, it's, I hear 67 percent all day everywhere, but really, it's one third of the population of Narragansett voted for the library, which is very nice. Um, it's thirty-two dollars. I hear it's thirty-two dollars. Thirty-two dollars a year. So I propose to stop all this angry issues is maybe we ought to look into what they call a library assessment. All those who want library, vote for it, want it, want to pay for it, they can sign up for an assessment. Now, you've got a three to one thing here. You've got a three to one. So instead of $32 a year, I imagine the assessment would be closer to $100 a year, which is not significant. So now we wouldn't argue anymore. Just sign up for an assessment to pay the bill if you want. Pay the bill when you want something. Why go and demand, actually demand of the majority to, that they should pay what you want? Uh, I'm not so sure that's the right thing. Uh, it, you know, it is the best place. The library is the best place. It always has been. The people are great. Then why are we evicting them? Why are we throwing them out of that building? I kind of like that building. That's part of the best part of Narek Answer, that little quaint building. I'd like to see maybe three additions put on it, maybe to take care of classrooms for special events. But I like the, I like the old little building, if it is so. I drive by numerous times, and there is, library, there is parking spaces there, so I'm not so sure parking is a significant issue. So I, I really don't want to throw them out of that existing building. I like them to stay there and us to fix the building. Uh, I can't help but want to do that. Uh, I also would like to, because the staff is such a great staff, we should immediately uh, expose ourselves and our, all our neighbors to more hours. We should be 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week, especially the weekends. On a Sunday, Sunday, that, that's a prime day where families have kids with nowhere to go and the library's closing. You know, so we want, what we want is interaction with this fantastic, so we need a 9 a.m., immediately 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., uh, a situation and look for volunteers to help Thank staff so the costs don't go to the roof Thank you, Stanley. where we staff it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Is there, is there anyone else? Mary. Mary Nato, 10 Second Street. Um, just to clarify, um, on what Stanley was saying. So it was 67.9% of the people who chose to vote. The other people just decided not to vote at all. So it's either yay or nay, but the people decided to vote, 67.9% voted for it. And the idea of putting additions on the current building does not cause, doesn't help with the parking problem and also there's no reimbursement for adding to the current building. So it would cost us more in the long run to make additions to that. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone else? 
All right, seeing none, I have a motion to retire to executive session of the Town Council in accordance with Rhode Island General Laws 42-46-4 and 42-46-5, subsection A. So moved. Well, I, 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 I got to do the items. It, it, I, okay. Real estate acquisition or lease of real property, the former Belmont property for public purposes or of the disposition of publicly held property in accordance with Rhode Island General Laws 42-46-5, subsection A5. Personnel, salary ranges for non-union and senior management employees in accordance with 42-46-5, subsection A1. And personnel, discussion regarding town manager position in accordance with Rhode Island General Laws 42-46-5, subsection A1. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there second. a second? All right, roll call vote. Mr. Lima. Richard Lima, aye. Jill Lawler, aye. Matt Mannix, aye. Patrick Murray, aye. Jesse Pugh, no. All right, motion's approved four to one. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <clears throat>